In today's video, we're going to be going over the basic components and features of WebEx. This will help you become more familiar with the interface as you participate in and host your own meetings. Okay, so to get started, we're going to go ahead and open up the WebEx app. I'm just pressing Command Space on a Mac just to search the Finder. Otherwise, you can click on a desktop icon or look it up in your files. So here we are at the main menu. I'm already signed in, but if you do not yet have a WebEx account, then you can email kathy.beal at snow.edu and send her an email which includes your full name, your email address, and your position here at Snow College, and she can help you get set up with a WebEx account so you can get signed in. Okay, so starting here with the main interface, as we can see, we have our little profile icon, and this link right here is the link for our personal meeting room. If I click Start Meeting, then I'll go ahead and just join this same personal meeting room. Alternatively, I can copy it from here and send it to someone else, whoever I want to join my meeting. Or if I want to join my own personal meeting room, I can also paste that link into this Join a Meeting link. If you want to join someone else's meeting, then you can enter the meeting information in here, whether it's a similar WebEx address such as this one, or whether it's a specific code correlating to that meeting room. Over here we have the schedule button and what this allows us to do is sync our Microsoft Outlook calendar with our WebEx calendar. I have personally found the best way to do this to be to go to the preferences tab right here, go to calendar under preferences and here where it says meeting list we're going to go ahead and check Microsoft Outlook. Once you've entered in your email, pressed enter, you can go ahead and sign in and that'll get syncing up your Microsoft Outlook calendar with your WebEx calendar. If we go over here to my Outlook calendar, we can see that today I had a meeting earlier and tomorrow I've got a WebEx meeting as well. And that has all synced up with my WebEx calendar, which is pretty nifty. We're gonna go ahead and look at some of the other features. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click start a meeting to join my own personal meeting room. As you can see, this is gonna first of all bring up a preview of what your video looks like, and this is also a space where you can test your audio. If you wanna switch any video or audio settings, then this is the place to do it before you actually enter your meeting room. As we go through some of the features of interest here, of course, we have the main preview window here in the front. Up here in the top right, we have the opportunity to change our background if we so please. However, I find this to be a bit gimmicky as it has a hard time making a really sharp selection. So I'm going to leave it at nothing in the background. If you want to mirror your image, then you can. Right then, down here at the bottom left, this is a button which allows us to connect to an external Cisco WebEx video system. This would be something such as a projector, external monitor, external TV. Um, for most intents and purposes, we're not going to be using it for hosting and joining meetings here at Snow College, so we're just going to go ahead and skip over that. However, if you do want to learn more, I recommend going to the Cisco WebEx guides uh, under this portion specifically. We'll leave a link down below in case you're interested in that. Moving on to audio, this button right here uh, dictates whether we're going to be using computer audio, which most times we, we're always going to join with the default computer audio. Alternatively, we can call in and access the meeting audio via cell phone. If you do decide to call in, once you enter the meeting, you'll be presented with a pop-up prompt which will have all the information you need to call in uh, through your phone to access that meeting uh, audio. Over here at this gear icon, we have the chance to change our output speakers and our input microphone, as well as test the volume and gain levels for both of these. The default option is just whatever your system settings are, and for mine it's just my computer speaker and microphone. I don't have any external devices such as speakers or microphones, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with these two. If I did wanna test the gain on my mic, um, I could lower it to make it much quieter, or I could put it much higher, and that'll maybe distort my voice and make it a little bit too loud, so that's why you gotta use the test button right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick about right here. There are a couple of other buttons right here which are a bit more intuitive as to what they do. I'll let you go ahead and read those and decide for yourself if that's what you want to use. Moving on here, we have the chance to edit our video output. For me, I don't have any external camera or any external webcam, so I'm just going to stick with my built-in laptop camera. 
This is an important one if you want to join the room muted or unmuted. It is recommended that you join already muted so that you don't create any disturbance as you join the meeting. This carrot down here also allows us to change our output speakers and input microphone as well and add any noise removal features which we would like. If you'd prefer not to join the room with any video or you just don't plan on using video in the first place, you can come down here and click stop video and that'll prevent your webcam video feed from appearing on screen when you join the room. Those are all the features of interest from this waiting room section. Note that this is the room that you enter whether you are joining a meeting that someone else is hosting or whether you're hosting your own meeting. Little pro tip from me here, I would recommend composing your image as nicely as you can just to come off a bit more professional, especially if you're going to be consistently participating in or hosting your own WebEx meetings. One of the big things especially is because most of these buildings we're in have these overhead lights. If we don't have any external lights, we're going to have these black voids of death in our eyes. I'll go ahead and show you what I look like if I don't have this external light here. That's without it. And that is with it. As you can see, it'll bring a bit more light back into your eyes. So if you can get a catch light in your eye, that'll look a lot better for your image. And that's everything we need to know regarding the waiting room. Now we're actually going to jump right into the meeting. Right then, and this is the main homepage when we enter a WebEx meeting. As we can see right now, I am the only person in this meeting. If I would like to invite someone else, there's a lot of useful information found under this meeting info blue shield button right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and I can share any of these links with whomever I would like to invite, whether it be this URL, this meeting number, or my specific meeting room address. I'm going to go ahead and share one of these with uh, this other computer here and get someone else in this room so we can do a bit more demonstration. I'm just going to go ahead and enter 2466. And, and I've got, got one, more one more person, person in, the in the room. As you can As see, the audio, the audio is gone kind of funky. funky. So from, so this, from this same participant panel, 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 we have the option to mute any participants if we are the host in charge. So that can be very handy if someone comes into your room with a lot of distracting audio and they're not muting themselves by themselves. Now that we have someone else here in the room, we can see the layouts changed. If you want to make any adjustments to the layouts, we have this magnifying glass which can uh, increase and shrink the size of how we view things. Alternatively, we can click on this layout button and change uh, the formatting of how things look and play around with that, see what you like. Of course, we only have two people in this room, so as we increase, you might want to change it to your preference. There are a couple of other options here. If we want to go full screen view, that'll get rid of all of the panels that were there on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and escape out of full screen view by literally pressing the escape button. And alternatively, there are a couple of other options here if you so desire. Okay, moving on to the panels. This is a big part of WebEx. This right portion of the screen here contains the panels and there's quite a few different kinds that we can use and they all have their unique functions. By default, we see the participants panel open with the notes panel closed right below it. If we click on the carrots, we can collapse this panel and it'll leave a lot of empty room in case we wanna add more panels. In order to add more panels, we can come down here to where it says apps, and we can add the apps panel, which will open by default. So we can click the carrot to minimize it. And we can also open the chat panel, which is opened by default to click the carrot to minimize it as well. If we want to add even more panels, we can come up here to where it says view, scroll down to panels, and click manage panels. If we want to add the polling panel or the multimedia viewer, we just select those, click on add, and then click OK. And as we can see, we have all of these panels visible here. Now with all of these panels, we can click inside of them and it's fairly intuitive what all of their functions are. The participants panel shows you who is in the meeting, also gives you some controls as to what you can do with those participants. We can go ahead and collapse that. Chat panel has the chat feature. The apps has a variety of different apps and useful um, plugins, and uh, you'll have to experiment with those to see exactly what they do because I haven't played around with all of them. Moving on, we have the notes panel. You can write your own notes for any uh, meeting details that you find important to write down. Moving on, we have the polling feature, which allows you to create and manage polls in case you want to collect information and data from the people uh, within the meeting itself. 
the multimedia viewer is, of course, if you do have those external uh, video devices. And as we mentioned previously, those aren't going to be of much practical use for us uh, for the most part. So we're not going to bother too much with this one. If I want to get rid of any of these panels, pretty simple. We just go ahead and click on the X. If you accidentally get rid of too many panels and suddenly you're left with nothing and you're kind of freaking out, do not worry. We can easily get those back. Just go back to view under panels and then we're going to click on restore layouts and that'll give us our default participants panel and notes panel. We're going to go ahead and move on. As we can see, this red button here is going to be the end or the leave meeting button. It can also serve as a um, leave breakout room button and in case you're in some other panels, it can just be the escape button as well. These three dots provide us with some additional uh, functions, the ability to lock the meeting, preventing new users from joining. As we can see from here, we do have the option to enable breakout rooms. This is one of the methods by which we can do this. We can either click on the slider here to enable breakout rooms. Alternatively, we can come up here to the tabs, click on breakout sessions and click on enable breakout sessions. Breakout sessions are really helpful if you want to have some more engagement within the WebEx meeting itself. Maybe you're teaching a class and you have maybe 20, 25 students. If you create five breakout rooms uh, with five, four to five students in each of those breakout rooms, you can have them discuss a topic. And then after they've discussed, we can all come back to the main WebEx meeting and everyone can kind of share what they learned and discussed. To start the breakout rooms, we'll go ahead and enable them as we just previously did. And from here, we can edit the number of breakout rooms we'd like and decide how we want to assign them. We'll go ahead and do it automatically. And as we can see, our friend Derek was put in breakout room number one automatically. If I want to assign someone manually to a breakout room, I can select that option as we just previously saw. Come over here to the participants panel right here, click on check, and then we can assign them to any room which we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign myself also to breakout room number one by going here. Clicking on myself, and now we are both in the breakout room. If you want to rename them, you also have the option. Now that these breakout rooms have been created, we can actually start the breakout session, move away from the main meeting and go into these sub meetings within the main meeting by clicking on start breakout session. So breakout sessions have now started. We'll go ahead and join these now. So as we can see right now, it's just me in the breakout session. The other person does need to join the breakout session as well. I'll go ahead and do that on the other computer here. And we now have myself and Derek here. We can discuss uh, the topic that we've been assigned. And when it's time, the host of the meeting can come down here to where it says breakout sessions, click on that and make any edits they would like to, or ultimately they can end all breakout sessions. We'll go ahead and click on this and we'll end the sessions. Now it's up to the actual users themselves to either be booted out after one minute or they can leave manually. I'll go ahead and leave manually by pressing the red button right here, leave session. Okay, and here we are back in the main meetings tab. As you can see, the breakout sessions are still expiring. So we're gonna move on to the next few buttons. We've got right here, the recorder, in case you wanna record your meeting for those students or participants who weren't able to make it, they can at least watch it and make up the assignment later. Click on the record button. And we have two options, record to the hard drive of your computer or you can record it in cloud. I personally recommend recording in cloud as this allows you to record a whiteboard. For some reason, you can't do that when you record on computer. So I'm gonna click record on cloud and click on record. The recording is now going on. As we end the meeting, it'll give us the option to save that recording and view it in the files so that we can have access to it and upload it. I'm gonna click on this button once more to minimize this little recording box. To the left of the recording button, we have the ability to share. We can share a few different things. If we wanna share our screen, we can share the entire screen. Even when we change windows, it'll continue to share exactly what the person behind the computer can see. Alternatively, we can share specific windows in case you want someone to just see your internet browser and you don't want them to see your recording software going on in the background. If you do want to show a YouTube video or anything that has audio, be sure to click share your computer audio. If you don't record your computer audio, the people participating in your meeting won't be able to hear anything. 
I recommend leaving this setting on automatically optimize. Alternatively, you can choose one of the following if you so please. Moving on to the other tabs we have here at the top, we can click on the file tab where we can share a file uh, so that everyone can view that file on screen. If I click next, I have the option to pull up a file. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up a photo here. I'll just do one of the Teaching and Learning Center. Click on open. And as you can see, that'll just populate the screen here so that everyone here in the meeting can view that. There are also some options for how you can choose people to view it. And you can play around with that to see what you prefer. If you'd like to get this off screen, you can go ahead and come to this little carrot right here. Click on X and you have the choice to save it if you've made any edits. I'm just gonna click no. Going back to the other sharing options, we have the whiteboard here in case you want to write anything or doodle or make anything specific. This is the tool that is gonna work for you. We're gonna go and share a whiteboard. And here we have the chance to, if we would like, uh, take a pen or a pencil and we can also change colors and write anything we'd like to and just kind of freestyle here as we will. And I just moved that individual line. I'll just say hello. And once we've done that, if you don't want to share your whiteboard anymore, come over here, click on this X once more. And if you'd like to save your, your beautiful work of art as I've done here, then you can go ahead and do so. But I think I'll skip it on this occasion. So that is all of the sharing functions. If you do want some additional options, then you can click on the share tab up here. Finally, we have the two classic buttons, the option to stop your video or the option to mute yourself. And that covers just about all of the features you need to know when participating in or hosting your own meetings here on WebEx. If you have any questions or concerns regarding WebEx and how to use it, then you can look up the Cisco WebEx official guides to get specific help, or alternatively, you can come visit us here in the Teaching and Learning Center on the lower level of the library, and we'll be glad to help you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.